Welcome to day four, Breakfast with Bob. We're at Challenge Penticton. My name is Bob Babbitt. Okanagan Lake behind us. We are based at the Hooded Merganser. This is the Canadian Multi-Sport National Championships, site of the 2017 ITU World Championships. We're going to have six World Championship events over 10 days. With me now, Mr. Jasper Blake. When you talk triathlon in Canada, who better to chat with a guy who basically raced for what, 20 years? 20 years, about 20 years. Yeah, yeah long time. So yeah. Jasper, what talk a little bit about growing up and your sports early on. Yeah, you know, I, I came from a downhill skiing background, yeah. uh, believe it or not, and spent many years pursuing that at a very aggressive So Olympic level. type of level. Or, or yeah, that was, that was that what was I was aspiring to. Yeah. I, I never made it to that level. Um, and was that here? What part of... It was, I grew up in uh, Interior, BC, so okay. it's, it's about five or six hours from here, okay. a little, little mining town. Yeah. Uh, and then we moved to Ontario. There was a great ski program uh, out in Collingwood, Ontario. Um, and I was in that, uh, hi highly immersed in downhill skiing for many years. But one of my coaches was actually an Ironman athlete. He was yeah. a skier and then he moved to Ironman. He did quite well at this race. And he, I think, you know, in my teen years, I think, you know, he, he was like, oh, I think you should probably be in a different sport. He never told me that. Right. And it wouldn't matter if he did. I was like, you were, I was my heart, my heart was, I yeah. was a downhill skier. And, you know, that, that dream never really came to fruition. It was my first real heartbreak, right. to be honest, in, yeah. in sport. Um, but I was a skier and then I, I moved, I'd always played tennis in the summers and competed. And so I actually spent uh, a couple of years, I moved to Toronto. Yeah. I live with a family. I train with a club uh, there and I got a scholarship at the University of Wisconsin. Uh, Green Bay. Uh, in Green Bay. Yeah, yeah. To play tennis. So I'm forever a Packers fan, uh, as you can imagine. Say. Yep. Yeah. Uh, so I spent a year there. Um, but in, in that time, that was my late teens. I was really like, what? you know, I should be doing triathlon. I sort of dabbled a little bit. Um, I'd done some local races uh -huh. and, and done pretty well. And I kind of had a, a real capacity for the hurt that you need to have. Exactly. Uh, and I loved it. And I, I love that the effort I was putting in was, was coming back, but I couldn't turn down a, a full ride scholarship. No. So I was like, I got to go and try this. But when I got there, I was like, my heart is just not here, but I spent a year there anyway. Sure. Um, and I ended up befriending all the swim team guys and the running team guys. And I basically spent my time training, training with, with those guys. Yeah. And when I came back to Canada, I was full gas, full on in. Uh, to the triathlon world. So in the sort of 93, 94 years, I dabbled a little. And then in 95, I went to Can Cancun World Championships yeah. uh, as, as an age grouper. Right. Uh, and then I spent two or three years as an age grouper in the 20 to 25 were you looking at that group. point because that was right around the time we became an Olympic sport? It for, was. Yeah. You're so right. Were you, so were you, were you thinking, hey, maybe that works? hundred percent. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, I was in the age group ranks and I was doing reasonably well. I got a, a bronze medal in Lausanne in uh -huh. 1998. Uh, and and at the same time, I was racing quite well as a pro in Canada. Also, oh, you um, can race as a pro in Canada. Well, was, it's, sort yeah. of. I was kind of in that weird in between phase where yeah. I didn't really know where I fit. Okay. I could go to you know small races in Ontario and compete as a pro sure. but I would just get throttled on, on the pro circuit it was back in the days of Maca and those oh, guys those winning guys. and I was I wasn't in that league but in the 98 99 years I started to get a little closer uh, I raced some World Cups um, I did you know reason I did well at our national championships yeah. but I didn't quite make the grade I right. mean there was no if ands or buts about it and then in 2000 um, I didn't make our team there and I thought I'll try an Ironman um, it was really what got me inspired in the sport was, was Iron Man to begin with. Yeah, yeah, in 19, I forget what year it was, 94 or 95, old VHS tape, put it in the thing, and Greg Welch. 94. It was 94. With Dave Scott. With Dave yeah. Scott. <laughs> and that is forever burned in my psyche. That was my Still my like thing. it doing the call. Yeah, 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 and it was NBC, you yes, know, it was a big was. deal. And, and I just remember, I mean, it's so vivid for me watching uh, Welchy. When and I didn't yeah. really know much about the sport back then, and I but there was this little guy. I was gonna say, yeah, guy we're, we're peach speedo, totally. <laughs> and I was just so caught up in the emotion of it, and I was like, I can do that. Like that is me, you know. Yeah. Like I can, I can go to the hurt locker right. and I can spend time there. And um, so that was really my inspiration. So in 2000, I thought, you know what, the short course thing didn't really work. Um, 
you know, on, on the big on the big playing field, but I tried Ironman. I tried Ironman Canada in 2000. Yeah. How'd you do? And I came fourth. As a pro? As a pro. So I, I <laughs> okay. showed up here, and it was my first Ironman. Everybody says, ah, oh, I got to pay your dues. You know, it's going to really... And I'm like, no, I don't think... So. I actually think I'm going to do you pretty good. You paid your dues. I played well, yeah, tennis, yeah. I skied. I've that's got an right, endurance that's machine right. going here. Yeah. That's right. So I, I showed up in 2000, and I love it. I got to tell you the story. So yeah. this is when Pete Reed is in his... Yeah. I mean, Pete Reed is the man. He right? won in 98, and he won again. Yeah, yeah. Totally. So I show up, and one of the funniest stories I like to tell is uh, I racked my bike. I got ra I got bib number 10. Right. You know, because I was doing reasonably well as a, as a pro in Ontario. Sure. And I kind of, you know, had a, you know, so they gave me bib number 10 for whatever reason, first Ironman. And Pete Reed was bib number one. Of and course. he had this, you know, Trek bike, and it was like the most slick thing you've ever seen. And I showed up, and I was like, one of the things I was really nervous about was nutrition. Yeah, it's like I have to make sure I get enough, and I practiced a lot. And so I showed up, my bike looked like a pack mule. It was the funniest thing. I had four water How many bottles. Gels? Did you have tape? Oh the top my god! I had. I didn't even have that. I had four water bottles, and then I had a yogurt container. <laughs> Duct taped, <laughs> duct taped to the the like the arrow bars yeah, underneath yeah. that held some weird bar that I was eating at the time. Yeah, yeah. And I just remember I was like racer number ten, and nine bikes down or ten bikes down was Pete Reed's bike, clean as a Nothing. whistle. It was the slickest looking thing you've ever yeah, seen. Yeah. And I just remember going, I have a lot to learn, <laughs> but I can't change it now. You know, yeah. like I've got, so I was carrying like four kilograms worth of water. He had like one bottle. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, so you know that but was. You got fourth. I got fourth. I ran my way into fourth. I ran a uh, 254. Um, wow. I was a good runner. That was yeah. my strength. and um, That's why you're related to Welchie. I, yeah, exactly. And I used to go out and I used to pretend I was like, I got to feel like Welchie looks. You know, like he just had the most beautiful running His gait. His running style was amazing for a little yeah. guy. He had those long legs. Amazing. And long yeah. arms, too. It was, yeah. It was really yeah. interesting style. Totally. And he, he just, just he had glided. such a totally he had such a good rhythm you yeah. know he was so he was sort of the guy to like, get out on the run course and be like i just do want to feel him? like uh i don't think i did if i did he was so far ahead <laughs> I, did, I didn't know i was racing him um i don't think i did i think i was sort of coming into it yeah, as yeah. he was getting yeah. out of it so so after you uh oh, actually i was 2000 you retired in 99 but after you finished fourth yeah then did you decide <laughs> okay because I, what i love is the fact that you haven't done a lot of ironmans you mm -hmm. were you were judicious yeah in choosing ironman races because what do you do like 15 or so in your whole career Something like maybe that. yeah where a lot yeah. of guys brian rose is just telling you 65 of yeah. them it's easy yeah. you had success go this is my wheelhouse yeah but you kept doing fast stuff too short stuff yeah. because that that, that speed, you could lose that very quickly. Exactly. And I actually went back to the short stuff in 2003. Yeah. And because I, I still had, as a downhill skier, the Olympics were the big the big ticket. Yes. And I still had that in my heart. I, oh, and so I you're was still like, thinking Olympics for skiing? I, no, 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 not no, for no, skiing. No, sorry, sorry. That, that ship had sailed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just meant, uh, be, you know, track Olympics, on. yes. And I thought, you know, in 2000, I got kind of close. Like, I there was little signs of yeah. that it could happen. So 2003... Um, I shut the Ironman thing down. I, I, I raced Ironman. Athens, try to get to Athens. Yeah, I did. And I went I went to Europe and I raced on the World Cup circuit and I had a little bit of success, you know, kind of like 15th, 16th yeah. uh, on my best ones. Right. Um, in the points races, I did pretty well. Uh, you know, I kind of the odd top five. So it was close, but it just it wasn't right. enough. I just wasn't in the I wasn't there. So. That was 2003, and then I went back to Ironman and committed fully to it because I was like, this is where I yeah. belong. And yeah. So, it, but you kept, you kept doing Olympic distance, and of course, at that point, there really weren't many 70.3. That was just, yeah. that was to come. That's right. They were called half Ironman. Yes. I mean, they, and California yep. had one. And we had Wildflower. We had stuff yep. like that, right? Yeah, that's right. So, yeah. making a living at the sport, because eventually mm -hmm. became a father, right? <clears throat> Two kids, and, and making a living at the sport can be tough unless you're winning the big races. It's true. And, you know, I had, I, I kind of always describe it like a roller coaster. I mean, right. I had years where, where things went really well. I, I won this race in 2006, and I yes. had bonuses attached to it, and, and things looked really great. And then you'd have other years where you didn't, and, and it Injuries. was very tough. Injuries. I, you know what? I was actually pretty lucky with injuries. I, I did a fairly good job of understanding my own body yes. and not getting, you know, I didn't have too many that yeah. really put me out for a long time, but certainly, yeah, everybody has they to deal with them niggles. for sure. But the, yeah, it was tough to make a living and it was easy when it was just myself and my now wife, yes. uh, you know, single, we were fun. just a couple, yeah, it was yeah. fun. She, we travel to parts of the world, get totally. something paid for you to come somewhere. Totally. Yeah. I, I used to have an orange Volkswagen van. We'd go to do the Ontario series camp and out. camp out and, 
um, those days were were pretty easy. You know, yeah. you didn't have to make much, and she no. she had a job. And and she liked it. She loved it. Was it. a vacation. Yeah. It, totally, it was super fun. So yeah. Then you have kids. Yes. That changes everything. It changes everything. Yeah. In a good way, because you don't want to be away from them for five hours on a Saturday or a Sunday doing a bike ride. Totally. So did that yeah. lead to doing shorter races and sort of? Or did it almost lead to you trying to figure out an exit strategy for how do I continue with the sport that I love without being dependent on racing income? It was a bit of everything. Okay. Uh, I, I'm not sure I can really say I had a, a strategy on what I was going to do. Evolved. Um, I think <laughs> when you know lots of guys have kids and lots of success, successful yep. guys have kids, um, I think you for a while for at least for me for a while I kind of not fooled myself because it's possible to do it um, and I thought I could just keep kind of going the way I was going but certainly there had to be some other way to get income right um, because it wasn't enough to fully support especially my wife went on maternity leave and, yes um, you know we had effectively one income now for three people instead of two income <laughs> for, 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 for two people, for two yeah, people. Yeah. so that was tough I, I you know I'll admit that uh, but I did. I still was making kind of enough to to make a go of it. Yeah. Um, but for me, more than anything, it was the recovery. That became really difficult. It became really difficult to put in the same volume and stress load uh, that I was used to and, sure. and recover. And and that really became my unwinding. Like I started in the last couple of years of my career, I, I'd have you know the odd really good race, and yep. I'd be like, oh, okay, I still got it. And then I'd have a few that were just shocking, <laughs> and and it was it was hard. It was hard, you know, to to kind of see the decline in my competitiveness. Uh, I found that tough, and it wasn't that I was, you know, wasn't. It, it, it was just kind of just happened. natural. Yeah, and I, I was also kind of getting older too. I to, to be honest, I was in my late thirties. Um, makes a big difference. I remember Rod, a big Rod Dixon telling me. That, you know, I can still do the same workouts. Yeah. But I got to take two days off totally. after those great workouts. You totally. can't continue to do you know, the same workouts. Over. You can't pile them on top of each other like you could when you're in your yeah. 20s or early 30s. Totally. Yeah, that that became tough. And then to your point, you know, I, the real thing for me in the sort of the, the last year or two of my career, I would wake up on a Saturday, big ride day, and I'd be like, I just don't want to go anymore. Yeah. I want to hang out with became my... Work. Yeah, and I want to hang out with my little guy. You yeah. know, like I had this new son, and he was just—I mean, you're—you change as a person. I totally. really believe, and, and for the better. I mean, no I, it has just been—you know—I have a six and an eight-year-old now, and I, I, I just great ages. Oh my gosh, I love it. I'm just so madly in love with those two, and I'd I'd hang out with them all day. All day long. Could. Yeah, they're just awesome. You know, so I didn't want to miss that. I yeah, and I felt like I kind of was, and that was yeah. the first time in my life I'd ever questioned whether I should be going on that workout. Where before I was yeah. just saying, hey, yeah. Thursday I do this, on Friday I do, I do that. Yeah. And the cool thing is, with the kids, is when you come home from those workouts, it doesn't matter if it's a good workout or a bad workout. Right? Yeah. You're your dad, let's go play. Totally. They yeah. don't, yeah, they don't care. They care less. They don't even really know what I do. <laughs> <laughs> and, and they, they, you know, my, you know, my son just wants to play Pokemon cards with exactly. me all the time. He doesn't, and, and I just love that. And, uh, and I don't want to miss that. And I was v acutely aware of the idea that you could miss it. Yes. Uh, and I really didn't want to. So, so now you're coaching. Yeah. And is Jeff Simmons? One of your yeah, guys? yeah, Jeff. Yeah, it's, it's it, yeah. He came on board uh, at the end of last year. Yeah. Um, and awesome. I mean, he's, I. Uh, yeah. He's doing well. He's doing great. He's had a, a rough year this year. Broke his arm yes. going into Ironman Texas. Texas. Yeah. So a few little uh, hurdles to overcome. But what a guy! You know, he very special. He, he is. It's hard to find a guy who's really understands the hurt you need to go through to really be successful yes. and that guy's re he's willing to go there like more than pretty much anybody i've ever yeah. met so in your career when you look back at races that you felt were this was my best race right yeah. or this is a race that meant the most to me yeah what would that be oh man that's a tough one <laughs> i that's really hard but you know what it has to be the stuff around penticton i'm yeah. not just saying that because we're here uh, this was a real special place for me. I, I was born in Kelowna, about yeah. an hour, oh, yeah. hour yeah, drive yeah, yeah. away. I remember flying in here uh, in 2000 for my first race. Yeah. And I remember, I, clear as anything, I remember saying to myself, this is going to be my race. It, like, I, this is my home. Yes. I, I really feel that. Um, so I, you know, I had, and I did this one, I don't know, 10 times or something. Um, and I won it in 2006 uh, cool, after exactly. many times trying. Yeah. And many times not, you know, coming second, third, fourth, like I was sort of always in there, but never punched one. And you get to a point where you're like, when am I going to win? Is it ever going to happen? Yeah. Yeah. And you, and you hope it will. 
And so, I, you know, 2006 here was was just so special. I, everything came together. I knew going in, I, I knew going in what my time was going to be yeah. because training had been so on point. And I thought if I do this time, and I was within a minute of what I thought I would do, uh, if I do this time, it's going to take like a better time to beat it and there's not many guys yeah. going that fast so yeah a lot of good stuff unfolded i was in such a peaceful place mentally like everything was just clicking it it's was just, grooving it was just yeah. the perfect day yeah so that was special but i also have races that went sideways that i i really chalk up as pretty special because i gutted it out or i right. i stuck to it and i maybe came fifth or sixth but i you thought you were going to drop yeah, I thought I was going to drop out. Twentieth place. Yeah, totally. But yeah. I, I found something to get through it. So, yeah, I mean, this one has a, a real special place in my heart. But there's lots of times where sure. I, you know, I, I'm, I'm grateful for the hurt that yeah. I went through. And so, know. in 2007, uh, you took your mom to the base camp at yeah. Mount Everest. You've done your research. <laughs> uh, I, I just love that. You know, yeah. so race for yeah. MS. Mom has MS. You she raised does. over 150k. We raised. Oh yeah, we had a little race for MS yeah. program that ran for a couple of years. We raised in the one year 120 thousand bucks or something. So cool. Yeah, it was yeah. amazing. And getting yeah. to base camp, how special was that? That was amazing. I mean, my mom is just the most beautiful person yeah. you'll ever meet. She's, she's amazing. She's had MS for. Since I was about 16, yeah. 17, uh, it progressed pretty quickly. She ended up in a wheelchair. You know, I, she's been in a wheelchair for as long as I can remember. Now it's funny; I can't even remember how she walks. Yeah. It's very strange. Yeah. It's a strange thing to think about. And sometimes she stands up, and I'm like, "Man, she's so short," because I, before I mess, I was probably shorter. Like it's yes. weird, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So weird things like that. But her, it's almost like she's been frozen in time in a, in it, the, the wheelchair, so you don't, don't remember is. the yeah, height. Yeah, yeah. But what we're so grateful for, nothing affected up here. Right? Yes. Well, she's just the same person. Yeah. And so the wheelchair just disappears. You, you, you get this spirit that comes out of her. It's amazing. So in it, her dream, like if you have a bucket list dream or whatever, her dream was base camp of Everest. Not getting up Everest. No, no, no. She had a, she's like, I want to go trek in Nepal. Right. And when my brother and I were, I was 12, my brother was 10, we were actually booked to go to Nepal. She was going to take us. Really? Just the two of us. Yeah. Yep. And we were going to go trekking at that age. Something happened. She got a job. I, f I forget what it was, but it, it didn't happen. And then she got MS. And with each year in MS, her health deteriorated sure. physically. Um, but we kind of always, we always brought it up. We're like, when are we, take, when are we going to Everest? And it, you know, I, it must have been 20 years that passed. And then my brother in 2006, he's like, we're doing it. We're, we're taking her. We're going to figure out a way yeah. to get her there. And so the wheels started turning. My brother was an amazing part of this uh, and his wife uh, in the planning. Um, and in 2007, we had a team of 14 of us, and then we had a team of Sherpas there. Sure. Uh, we, we wanted to have no sort of, uh, I don't know whether, we, we weren't trying to be hardcore. We no. were like, let's, let's just get her there. Let's get there, right. And, and we literally did a team of 14. We had this uh, rickshaw type thing with a big wheel on it. Uh, that we so she, I mean, so really, you, it's basically, she needed to be carried. Yes, and w the the contraption we had had a big wheel. Yeah. Uh, so it did roll over, but the the trails were way rockier, and oh, there's yeah. stairs, oh. and it, you got to so carry it. We ended up carrying her for the bulk of it, and it was something else. Uh, and and we got there. Yeah. We got there, and you know, people got sick. No altitude sickness, yeah. thankfully. That's the one that will send you down, and then yeah. you're done. Uh, but people kind of got these really bad coughs sure. that you get. But we got there, and I, I, I still can't believe we did it, to be honest. When you it's look almost, back at it, and you're yeah. like, because you, yeah. you, you, similar to your triathlon days, you're one step at a time. You right? are. You can't think yeah. about the top. you got to yes. think about this mile. Totally. And when you're, when you're in it, when you're doing it, you're just, that's what you're doing. But right. when you think of it, it seems like a monster. But we took three weeks up and back. Uh, amazing. Some of her friends, some yes. of my friends, you know, thick guys that were there to kind of do the lifting yeah, and then yeah. our team of Sherpas who were just amazing. Um, and we got there, we, we took two weeks to get up. The day of getting to base camp was actually kind of funny because you stay, you're, you're now above 5,000 meters, right. which is like, oh. that's when you really start to feel it. It yeah. was, it was one of the hardest things I've ever done. Iron Man's, whatever. This was, it was tough. And, and the day of getting her to base camp, we were staying at the highest point you stay in a yeah. little lodge thing. Uh, it was four hours in, four hours back. We got in there and we're like, we're running out of daylight here and we're on a glacier. 
and <laughs> it's like good, yeah. it's like two o'clock yeah, now yeah. and it's getting dark at six or seven or you know five or six or whatever so we ended up having to hightail her out of there we had like a team of four we were just yeah, rotating yeah. because we we're worried it was going to get dark <laughs> you're racing yeah gear. She clicked mm-hmm. in. <laughs> totally so we only really spent like 20 minutes at base camp hey, welcome to base camp yeah we're out totally we we're out of here and everybody was just like on the edge like people were sick it was it was really hard but Honestly, like tears all around. Well, the bond I mean, between you, your brother, and your mom I mean, after that has it was, to be. It was amazing, and it, honestly, going in, it was already there. Yes. Uh, you know, it, the, we had a we have a real special thing, the three of us. Right. And but that just was just so How cool. I mean, it was so cool, and and I, I mean to to be able to help her do that was just like unbelievable. It, it's it's okay. sort of like that was like a life dream. Oh, for of her. course. Yeah. So, so talk a little bit about your coaching and then yeah, how many people so, you're coaching now. Yeah, so our company, uh, you know, I came, I came out, of, out of racing. And yeah. as I said earlier, it was a pretty natural progression for me um, to start coaching. And it was a slippery slope. You know, you take on one person and then they find out. And you're, so, but I love it. I love it. I, I really love still being connected to the yeah. sport. Um, I really love the entrepreneurial side of it. Yes. Funny enough, I found that I'm, I'm as interested in as the mechanics of triathlon. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I started uh, B78 coaching uh, about four years ago now. And what and does that stand for? But the B, so I, I'm a huge advocate of people understanding why they do something. Right. So the B is like, everybody has to pick a B word. It sounds crazy, but yeah. So be fit, be inspired, uh, be whatever. And that's part of our intake. We, yes. On our website, we don't even do results. We, we have like, what, why are people doing this? Right. Um, so that's the B and 78 is platinum. Because I was like, we do platinum coaching. I don't, I don't know iron. if I do the same thing again now. But anyway, that's just where it, it came from. Yeah. And uh, so we've grown. You know, in the beginning, it was me coaching a couple people. We're up to almost 70 people now. Oh, my God. And I have a team of about eight coaches. And, you know, some of them want to take a couple athletes just to stay kind of connected sure. with the sport. And um, But it's great. I love it. I love every aspect of it. I love that I get to still come to the races and be that's part, the of the best part of the action. Yeah, yeah. So, so I, obviously racing yourself is, is great mm-hmm. but being at the finish line for one of your athletes yeah. who's you're not, not necessarily a pro but somebody yeah. who had you know where they started you yeah. were there for the whole journey yeah and now you're seeing them come across wow. this finish line yeah it has to be so rewarding it's unbelievable and you hit the nail on the head like i i really love that in this sport everybody's journey is so different yes and it doesn't matter if you're the person like jeff finishing in eight hours right or you know some of the people i finish or our coach finish in the le- 11 to midnight Whatever, hour yeah. and and it's so inspiring to see these people i coach one woman who three years ago 100 pounds heavier pa- smoked a pack a day like like just changed her lifestyle around yeah. and this woman has like the best attitude you've ever seen if you could package up her attitude and like implant it in everybody the world would be yeah. this crazy place um so yeah, I and every race we get, you know, stuff like that. You know, these people that are just changing their life around, or they're taking on a challenge yeah. they never thought possible. Or it's amazing. It's just it's awesome. This to, sport to is see pretty that. special that way. It really is. You know, it more really so is, than yeah. just the individual swimming, cycling, and running on their own. I think yeah. it's, it's the mix of those sports. It, it is. It, yeah. it, it, it can be. Yeah. It can be life altering. It really is, and I I really love. A couple things. You're basically towing the line with the best people in the world. Right. You know? You can't go to, yeah. you can't walk out at the Masters and go hit no. the ball with those guys. Exactly. So everybody's kind of in the same community. The race gets real in a hurry. Not in a hurry, <laughs> but it doesn't matter if you're the best. You go through, like, it's awful There's sometimes. dark spots. Super dark spots. So if you're the winner or the person in the last across the line, yeah. you're going through similar stuff. So that's yeah. cool. And you you're, can compare notes after the race and how about totally. that hill how about that wind how about that, that yeah chop in the water all that totally and yeah. everybody has to go through the same struggle to get there right. you know it's like and i i just love that it's so real it's so raw you know it, it's it's really cool as a guy who loves this area um seeing what happened with you know iron man going away and then yep. challenge coming in mm-hmm. and now you know it's going back in the other direction We've got 1500 yeah. or so here this year i think there'll be over 5000 next year yeah. with six world championships over 10 days yeah are you liking what's going on here love it and and I, i'll be honest it was really sad when iron man left here totally uh, yeah. it, it was this this race people used to come across the finish line and literally line up for next year and sign it up. would sell out overnight yeah like it, and and it was you could you can point that directly at the the city of Penticton like right. the people you get 
four thousand volunteers some years. I mean, yes. like who For else? A little does city that? like this, yeah. Yeah, it's amazing. So, it was. It's a real special place, and and it kind of it did. It's had some rough years since Iron Man left. Um, it's such a powerful brand. Yes. Um, but now it's 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 the energy is coming back, right? And like Mike Brown is awesome. That the guy best. has so much enthusiasm. Yep. Hearing him speak at the pasta party last night, I'm like, this guy is passionate about this sport. Yes, he is. And I think this year and next year is just going to inject new life. Yes. In in into the race, and it's awesome. I it, love I'm it. so it it really warms my heart because it's kind of coming back. You can feel it, uh, and it's it's awesome. So love it. Yeah. So where will you be tomorrow? I'll be all over, all the, over place, the place, man. Right? Yeah, we we've got a whole mix. I'm really gonna make sure I'm out there uh, to support Jeff and and make sure he knows you know where he is relative sure. to people and make sure he's on track. Um, but I'll be out there, you know, from the start to some of the the, the last people coming in. I we've got a whole mix of people. Um, I'll be all over the place. Love it. Yeah, Jasper. So. It's it's it is interesting. We we've. we've obviously traveled parallel paths for the last 20 some yeah, years yeah really really great to get to know you thanks and congratulations yeah. on everything you're doing thank you love and, the attitude yeah. thanks and you know it's so, so great to speak with you i, I honestly it's awesome I, i'm sitting across a legend i'm so oh, stoked no. <laughs> <laughs> it's great this is breakfast with bob my name is bob babbitt we are a challenge penticton at the hooded merganser hold on everybody we will be right back